Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. Glory be to God this morning as we come in, guys. Hallelujah. We welcome the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Glory be to God. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus this morning. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Mighty God, I welcome everyone this morning. You know, I know, that, I know that a lot of times when people log on, as soon as they hear God or Jesus, whoo, they're gone because they don't want to hear about God. But I'm going to talk about him today. Amen. I'm going to talk about Jesus today and every day going forward to the rest of my days. Glory be to God. The name of Jesus shall be heralded from these lips. Bless God. So if you come today and you want to stay on with us for this Bible dive with Jet, then I welcome you in the name of Jesus. And I promise you it is going to be good. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Yes, why? Because he is good. Amen. And his mercies endures forever. So let us take a moment to give him thanks this morning. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy God, we worship and we honor you. We bow before your presence as we enter into your very courts with thanksgiving in our hearts and into your presence. We come with praise, Lord. We thank you and we come in the name of Jesus, which is the name that you have given us by which we can approach you, Lord. Hallelujah, we come in that holy name and we say, Lord, we thank you for looking on us as you look on your son Jesus with the same love that you loved him. You said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so we come in that great name today and we ask that you, you will look on us in compassion and in mercy. And we pray that the holy presence of the Lord will be with us even as we go into your word today. We want more from you, Lord. We want your word to come to come alive from the pages of this Bible today and to ignite our hearts to love you even more. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Bless each and every one that will hear the word today. Those that will receive the word today. Oh God, we pray that that word will fall upon good soil, oh God. And that their hearts, oh God, will be knitted together in love with yours. In Jesus' name I pray. And we ask for your blessings today. That you heal us and you touch us and you bless us as we move forward in our day. In the name of Jesus, I thank the Lord for today. I am so 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 excited bless god i'm always excited but today i am super excited i feel the joy of the lord amen and the joy of the lord is my strength so we are actually going to continue today in the book of acts guys book of acts so we are now at chapter 22 we're going to be doing 22 and hopefully 24 today so we should be able to get through those today before i have to leave and then tomorrow we will finish up with 27, 28. That's the book of Acts, guys. We did amazing this year. Amazing so far. Amen. We've been going through this Bible, and it's just been a wonderful, joyful ride. Amen. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So, bless the Lord. Those of you who are here, thank you. Welcome. Please share the live. I really would like to ask you guys just to tap your screen as you come in to um, like and to share and share the life, please. Bless God. Let me see if I can share. I've never, sh I don't really share because I don't know how to do this, but let's see. How do we do this? Mighty God. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be able to click on that and say share the live. Bless God. I'm going to share it over here. Give me a moment, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Those who want to watch it can come and watch it. I've never done this before. Okay. So I can share. Amen. Let's do that. 
And if anybody wants to watch, then they'll be able to watch it. Bless God, they don't have to, but they can. Now, how do I go back? How do I go back? Here we are. All right, so I'm still here, guys. I'm trying to share the live myself before I get started. And uh, I've never actually shared it before, but now I'm trying to see how I can do that. This is kind of cool. Amen. Bless the Lord. So how do we do this? We go here, 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 here. Okay. I can share it with a few people. Okay. I see. I see how this works. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm so excited. Anyways. <laughs> You know what? The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It really is. When you wake up every day in the joy of the Lord and just, you know, fill yourself up with some joy from God. Not 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 joy from things, you know, but the Lord. You just it just gives you so much strength to go through your day. Amen. Bless God. And so in the book of Acts, yesterday, my God, I tell you, it was such a good word yesterday. Amen. And we read yesterday Acts chapter 21 and 22. And we see Paul, how he was going to Jerusalem and was going to be faced with some crazy stuff down there. Just like when Jesus was on earth and he had to go to Jerusalem to be crucified. Well, Paul says he doesn't even know what was awaiting him there. But the Holy Spirit was telling him, you are going to be in bonds and, you know, such and such. And then he got there. And yes, he was arrested and they wanted to beat him and all that kind of stuff but then he was able to declare to them that he was a Roman which means that he was born free and they they had no jurisdiction or right to 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 do what they were planning to do to him and um, I was used, telling you guys that we as believers in Jesus Christ we ourselves when we were when we accept this salvation by faith we are reborn into the kingdom of God and our rebirth gives us that liberty in Christ so that the enemy has no more jurisdiction. He has no more dominion over us. Amen. So that we are free. Problem is that a lot of people don't understand or recognize that they have liberty in Christ. So they continue, you know, living under the oppression of the of, of, of hell, under the oppression of the enemy, living as if they are in bondage. Well, we have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ and we need to know that and stand therefore. Having done all to stand, stand therefore in the liberty where Christ has made you free. Be not entangled again. Don't allow yourself to get back wrapped up and entangled in the yoke of bondage once you have been set free. Amen. There's a, a recap from yesterday. So now, we are going to continue with first, with chapter 23, right? And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren... I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. So let me let me see here. I'm going to go back to chapter 22 and from 30. It says, or from 29, Then straightway they departed from him which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. On the morrow, so the next day, because he would have known the certainty wherefore he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priest and all their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before him. So now the next day comes and Paul is now brought down and was in front of the council. And Paul, earnestly looking, beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. So in essence, he was a man that lived out the law of God, right? So he didn't have anything to reproach himself for. He knew his lifestyle. He knew that he was walking holy and righteously before God. He had his testimony that he was living in all good conscience before God. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. So Ananias says, slap him on the, on the mouth. How dare he talks about how wonderful he and how great he is, how much he's been living holy. See, the devil doesn't want us to have our testimony, right? 
The devil, that's exactly what's happening right now. That the, the, the world wants to shut up the Christian. Wants to shut us up. What, don't want us to have our testimony of, of the liberty that we have in Christ. Don't want us to testify that the fact that we are living a holy life before God. They want us to shut up. So when he testified and said, I have lived, a, had a good conscience before God until this day. Slap him on the mouth. They said to him, smite him. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee. You want to smite me because of my testimony, because I am talking the truth about what God has done in my life. Well, let me tell you something. God is going to smite you. So he says, God shall smite thee, thou white wall, thy whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law and commandest to me to be seen contrary to the law. In essence, you, you standing here claiming to be somebody who knows the law, and so you want them to smite me. But you're breaking the law in telling them to smite me because I am a Roman citizen, free. You have no legal right under the law to smite me. So Paul says you are a whited wall. You know a whited wall? You look at it, it's painted beautiful. It looks good on the outside, but scratch the paint off and see what's underneath that. You understand? So he had a facade, but he was not re legit, is what Paul was saying to him. And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Oh, are you talking to the high priest like that? As if like the high priest, you can't, mm, you're not allowed to speak to the high priest like that, right? Revilest thou the high priest? Then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. So Paul says, okay, excuse me, I didn't know that he was the high priest. You understand? Sometimes, you know, you, you, Paul is like, it's like he ain't acting like a high priest for him to send and say, smite Paul like that. Paul says, I didn't even know he was the high priest, right? But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, men and brethren, I am a Pharisee. Because he's like, some of the people were Pharisees, others were Sadducees. So he says to them, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. Right? So when he said that to them, when he had said so, there arose a, dis a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So now the Sadducees and the, and the Pharisees start having a dissension. They start going against each other now because, hey, first of all, they were coming in unity against Paul. But when the Pharisees found out that Paul was a Pharisee, they now want to take side with him. And so now they're against each other. Amen. Let me tell you something. God knows how to turn your enemies against themselves, right? God knows how to fix things in your favor and turn your enemies so that your enemies will become enemies to themselves and destroy themselves. Bless God. I thank God that he knows how to fight my battles for me. And so Paul perceived that the one part was Sadducees, the other was Pharisees. He cried out in the council, men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee of the hope and resurrection of the dead. I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, all right? Some, so the Sadducees, they don't believe that there is a resurrection after, there's another life after this, that you're going to be resurrected. But the, the Pharisees, and he says they don't believe, the Sadducees don't believe in angels nor spirit. But the Pharisees confess both that there is angels, there is spirit, and there is a resurrection, after the dead and there arose a great cry and the scribes that were of the pharisees part arose and strove saying we find no evil in this man but if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him let us not fight against him so now the, they started to fight against each other some of them said listen i the pharisees are now on his side because he's a pharisee now they said oh we don't find any fault in him because they believe in the angels they believe in spirits and they believe in uh, afterlife right but these guys the, the sadducees don't believe all of that so now they start fighting each other and when there arose a great dissension the chief captain fearing lest paul should have been pulled in pieces now <laughs> one is pulling paul here the other one is pulling him here they're like no we, we want it you know so all of a sudden they're like oh no if they continue like this they're gonna tear paul apart like they're gonna pull him in pieces right 
And so they commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. So God, the angel of God comes to encourage Paul, don't worry, you know, things are going to work out in your favor because the fact that the, the, the way that you testify for me here in Jerusalem, you're going to also have to testify in Rome, which means you won't die in Jerusalem, Paul. You're not going to die in your situation. You're not going to die in the struggle. Glory be to God. Somebody need to throw their hands up and say, I'm not dying in this struggle. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're going through some stuff, guys, and it looks like it's the end. It looks like we're never going to make it through this this, this this situation but god is saying you will have to testify for me another day you will have to testify for me next year you will have to testify for me in another country you are not going to die in your struggle be of good cheer paul for as thou hast testified of me in jerusalem so must thou be a witness also at rome glory be to god hallelujah Mighty God, I love that. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they have killed Paul. Imagine, guys, imagine this. Paul had a vision where the angel told him, don't you worry. This situation you're going through, Paul, you're going to get through it because the way you testify for me in Jerusalem, you're going to testify for me the same way in Rome. That means you're going to make it through, Paul. But yet you have the enemies of Paul who were coming together under a curse. They were, they were making a vow to themselves and to each other. We are going to do what it takes to kill Paul. Let me tell you something. The enemy of your soul is always plotting, always coming together, binding together in, 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 in their, in their um, decisions that they want to destroy you. Not because God says that you're going to make it through doesn't mean you're not going to go through some struggles because the enemy of your soul is constantly plotting against you. But the, whose report, mighty God, hallelujah, hallelujah, whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe the report that says, my enemy is too strong for me. My enemy is coming against me and they, they have determined, I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to sleep night, day, I'm going to do whatever it takes until I destroy this one. Whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe the report that says that they are going to kill you? Or the report that says, listen here, you're going to make it through this one because you're going to have to testify for me in another place. God's report must always be the report that we cling to. Amen. This is the report that we must believe. You go to the doctor and they tell you one story. We come out and start claiming, oh my God, doctor says I have six months to live. What did Jesus say? What what does the word of God say over your life? What does the Lord say concerning your situation? Mighty God, whose report will you believe? I hear the Holy Ghost. And when it was day, so now they banded together and they bound themselves under a curse, an oath, guys. They were like determined that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy hell conspiring against the people of God. Hell coming together in, in, in an oath and conspiring against the people of God. But whose report will you believe? And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. In essence, they were, they were taking um, what they call that these days where people go on hunger strike. Yeah? Hunger strike. Until the government changed such and such, we are not going to eat. And you know what? Eventually the government changes their mind because they don't want a whole bunch of people to die because of them. 
So people go on a hunger strike all the time. They could be in, 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 in prison and because they don't want certain things to happen, they said, I'm going on a hunger strike. I'm not eating. They bring the food day after day. They refuse to eat until they change something in their favor. Now, therefore, you with the council signify to the chief captain that we bring him down unto you tomorrow as though he, you would inquire something more perfectly concerning him and we or and we or ever he come near are ready to kill him so they're like go we want you guys to tell paul tell paul that they need tell the people that they need to bring paul down tell them exactly somebody over here says look what joseph went through amen they conspired to kill him but at the end of the day joseph went from Potiphar's house to prison and then uh, went from pr from prison to become ruler in 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 in, uh, in in Egypt amen and so let me tell you something god is able to work situations out in your favor and so now when paul when they came to the chief priests and the elders and said we have bound ourselves so we have made a vow that we are not going to eat or drink until this brother paul is dead we're not going to eat or drink, right? So they said, you, we need you to, 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 to send for Paul and, and, and signify to the chief captain that he bring him down to you tomorrow. And so we are going to lay in wait so that when he's coming, we can come upon him and we can get rid of him. We will be ready to kill him. The enemy sometimes is plotting for your demise, mighty God. But God is plotting for your victory. God has a plan, mighty God. Glory to God. Give me a moment. Glory to God. There is a song, a chorus that the Lord gave me. And sometimes I have to remind myself what God has in store for me when things don't look right. The Lord gave me this chorus when I was going through a rough time. And it says, I, I know God has a plan for me. Yes, I know God has a plan for me. The devil is fighting me. Yes, my enemies are even taking bets. But God has a plan for me. And so sometimes I have to encourage myself with that song. Because I believe that God has a plan and his plan always is the one that will stand amen and so here these guys were plotting and they want to say bring paul down pretend you're going to ask him some more questions to get a perfect understanding of what he's teaching this is the cons the, the connivingness of the enemy we want you to pretend that you're gonna try and investigate more about the, the you know what knowledge of the word that he's teaching we want to know more and so when you bring him down we're gonna lay in ambush we're gonna set up barracks and ambush against him and we're gonna get him and it says here that when paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait so paul's nephew heard it that they are lying in wait. He went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Amen. Now then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath, uh, he hath a certain thing to tell him. So they said, Go and talk to the commander. Talk to the chief captain. Tell him what you just heard. Right? So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul, the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, what is that that thou hast to tell me? Mighty God, sometimes God is going to have to, God raise up people on your behalf, even children. My God, that God can raise up and use in a situation. Look at this. This is a young man. This is probably a child that heard these people talking and went and tell his uncle about it. And so he, they called him in and took him by the hand. You know, he's a child when the chief 
chief captain can hold his hand and lead him and say, come, tell me, tell me what you heard, right? And so he said, the, chief, the Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow unto the council as though they would inquire something of him more perfectly. So they're like, he says, I heard him saying that they want you to bring Paul down because they want to pretend that they're going to ask more questions of him. But do not thou yield unto them for their lie in wait for him of them more than 40 men which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed Paul. And now are they ready looking for a promise from thee. So they are waiting for you to give them the go ahead to bring Paul down so that when he's on route, they were gonna, they're gonna intercept him and kill him. So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him, seeing that, see thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. Let nobody know that you told me this. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers. Good God Almighty, hallelujah! I hear the Holy Ghost, glory to God. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, greater is he that is, is, is in me than he that is in the world. He says, more are with us than those that are with them. So they have 40 men lying in wait for Paul. And here the centurion says, go and get ready 200 soldiers to go to Caesarea and horsemen, three score. We want about 60 horsemen and 10, six or 70 horsemen and spearmen and, and spearmen get about 200 spearmen that would carry their spears, right? This is how much this man was like, if they're coming with 40, we're going to show them. They want war. Let us show them what war looks like. Amen. At the third hour of the night, we want you to have these men ready. And provide them beasts that they may set Paul on and bring him safe unto Felix, the governor. Let me tell you something. The enemy thinks he has us surrounded and he thinks he has, he has us outnumbered. But God has a plan that working, that's working in our favor. God has. There's more that is with us than those that are with them. Praise God. God is going to make sure that you have angelic escort, mighty God, along your journey. Glory, hallelujah. Along your journey in this life, you are going to have angelic escort. No wonder why they can't kill us. No wonder why they can't stop us. Look how long they've been trying to bring the church to naught and to bring this gospel to a perpetual end. But they will never be able to, to stop us because the Bible says, Jesus said, upon this rock have I built my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The gates of hell will never be able to prevail against the people of God. And so we know that we are covered. The Bible said, my God, that the angel of the Lord stand, mighty God, around them and encamps round about them that fear him and he delivers them. This is the kind of, of blessing that we have, beloved ones. This is the entourage in which we move, beloved ones. We have, we have the angel of God that is escorting us along our journey. I love the word of God because it gives me strength when I read it in the name of Jesus. So he says, provide them beasts, that's animals that they may set Paul on and bring him safe. What does Jesus say? Jesus says, I am going to present you faultless before the throne of my glory with exceeding great joy. Nothing and no one will be able to pluck you out of my hand. I want to know, you to know today that we can trust in our God. We can trust in our living Savior. What he promises to do for us, he is going to do. He is going to escort us to the very end. Amen. We are more than conquerors. We are going to make it. 
Bless the Lord. If we only hold on to our faith and believe God, I, I want to let you know God has ears in every place. He knows every plotting of the enemy. He knows every conniving plot of the enemy. Everything that they're doing against us and trying to destroy us. But God has a plan. And he wrote a letter after this manner. Bless God. He says, Claudius Lys Lysias, unto the most excellent governor Felix, sendeth greeting. This man, so God has people in high places. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God has people in high places. Mighty God that he can call on when you need. Hallelujah. When you need help. God has angels set up. He has people of high ranking. Angels of high ranking. That is looking over your affairs. So this man wrote unto the centurion. He wrote unto Claudius. He says, Claudius Lysias. Unto the most excellent governor Felix sendeth greeting. This man was taken of the Jews and should have been killed of them. Then came I with an army. God says, God is saying to you, I have an army. Hallelujah. That is escorting you. Mighty God. Sometimes we believe we feel like the devil has us so surrounded. He is so great. And Lord Satan is so bad. And Satan is so strong. And we give so much praise to the devil. The Bible says when, when, the, when the, the enemy comes upon you. Listen to this. When the enemy comes upon you like a flood. The Lord raises up a standard. Because the greater part is with God. Mighty God, when Satan comes upon you like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard. We like to read that scripture and we like to give the, the flood to the devil. We say, when, Satan, when the enemy comes upon me like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard. We make God look so weak. But no, it, the enemy comes against you, but it's God that raises up a standard like a flood against the enemy. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. This man was taken of Jews and should have been killed of them. Then came I and ar with an army, rescued him. Hallelujah. Jesus rescued me, having understood that he was a Roman. Mighty God. Thank you. And when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death nothing led to his charge worthy of death or of bonds and when it was told me how that the jews laid wait for the man i said i sent straightway to thee and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before before thee what they had against him farewell amen farewell god is with you then the soldiers as it was commanded them took Paul and brought him by night to, uh, to Antip, uh, Antipar, uh, sorry, Antipatris, right? On the marrow, they left the horsemen to go with him and returned to the castle. Who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle of the governor, presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was. And when he understood that he was of Cilicia, I will hear thee, said he, when thine accusers are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. So the thing is, he was being kept secured. My God, because you see, when the enemy is trying to plot against you, God is going to stand in as your defense, mighty God. Hallelujah to God. God is going to, the enemy will, Satan himself will stand before God and accuse you. But God stands up as your defense. That's why the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, seats at the right hand of God makes intercession for us mighty God he is our advocate general mighty God he is the one that stands up when the enemy accuses us Jesus stands up on our behalf and say I paid for that sin I paid for that I've already dealt with that on the cross bless God this one is not guilty because I took the punishment for him or her and after five days 
Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullius, who informed the governor against Paul. And when he was called for Tertullus, uh, Tertullus um, began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence. So he's now praising the governor. And he says, we accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix with all thanks, thankfulness. So they are praising this Felix and calling him noble and how much they accept all that he's done and they're thankful. But they said, notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow. They're calling Paul a pestilence. You understand? That's why that's how the world views the Christians, eh? That's how they view us. We're like we're like ticks in their bodies, man. Every we 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 make them uneasy. Right? We're like ticks, we're like pestilence to them. They don't want to hear the truth. It makes them uh, when they hear that truth, bless God. And a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So they're accusing him of all these things. Who also have gone about to profane the temple whom we took and would have judged according to our law. So in essence, we would have killed him because the law says, if you profane the temple, then we should kill you. But the chief captain Lysias came upon us and with great violence took him away out of our hands. <laughs> Almighty God commanding, you know what? It makes me laugh because they said this, this, um, that the, the governor took Paul with great violence. You know what? That's what Jesus did for us, guys. Did not Jesus take us out of hell with great violence? Jesus endured violence. But when he got into hell, you know, you understand that Jesus was not weak and broken and, 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 you know, incapable in hell. When he got down there, the Bible says he walked up before that dragon and he, he fought with them in hell. He overcame them and he snatched the keys of death and hell. Jesus took back what belonged to us with great violence. Jesus took us back out of hell with great violence. Glory be to God. My salvation didn't come cheap. And that's why we shouldn't cheapen our salvation. We shouldn't, we shouldn't water it down. We shouldn't walk around and, 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 you know, play small. Play small because we want people to be okay with us. We have to know who we are in Christ. Glory be to God, the sister says. Yes, we have to know, glory to God, who we are in Christ. This salvation, the Bible said, hey, Koshara, the Bible said, mighty God, that you have been bought with a price. When it says that, it means it was no small price. It wasn't a penny. You, Jesus didn't pay cheap for your salvation. You were bought with a price. There was a heavy price tag on your head. You were bought with a price, not with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You are something special, children of God. You are something special, believers in Jesus Christ. You have been bought with a price that's worth more than silver and gold. It's the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Precious means that there is no value to it. You cannot add a price tag to the blood. It, I mean, it, you can't. Nobody can pay for this one. I mean, let me tell you something. Nobody can pay for this. Nobody can pay for this. That's why salvation is free. The grace of God. Because if we were ever supposed to pay for our salvation, we couldn't afford it. 
That's why blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. When you didn't have nothing to pay for your salvation, but Jesus paid it all. And you just have to walk up and accept it by faith. Mighty God, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. But the ones who think that they have something to pay... Therefore, they can do something good to make heaven. They, they, they can live a certain way and make heaven. They can give to charity and make heaven. Those are the ones that are in trouble, beloved ones. They cannot see God because there is no other way to get to heaven. You cannot pay your own way there. Mighty God of Daniel, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. I don't even remember where I was, but this is so amazing. So he says the, the chief captain Lysias came upon us and with great violence took him away out of our hands. Our God delivered us out of the pit of hell with great violence. Mighty God with great violence. He was not. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent took it by force. The violent takes it by force. Jesus Christ, more violent than that old dragon, went into hell after Satan thought he had poured out everything that he could upon Jesus. Mighty God, when he laid down his life for himself, he went down into hell and with great violence, he took it. Mighty God took back my victory, took back my dominion. Mighty God took back my purpose, took back my anointing, took it back from that dragon, took back the key of death and hell and rose in victory. I love the word this morning, commanding his accusers to come unto thee by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things whereof we accuse him. So he says, if you examine Paul, you will see that he, what, uh, he is guilty of everything that we are accusing him of. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, for as much as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge. So Paul is addressing the is addressing the governor, telling him that I know that you have been a judge for many years unto this nation. I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. I am I am more than excited to answer you for myself. Because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. I've only been there 12, 12 days. 12 days now that I've been there to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city. None of this happened in the last 12 days that I was there. Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call hearsay, Hearsay, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Everything that I've been doing, I am doing according to the book. I am re I'm worshiping God according to the law as is written by the prophets, and yet they call it hearsay. Hearsay. Right? Heresy. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow. Right? I have hope towards God. And it's okay. The Bible tells us that hope makes not ashamed. Right? And he says, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead. I believe that there is going to be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Amen, guys. Remember this? That when we all die, the Bible says we shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. Amen. There is going to be a judgment, a resurrection. Some people will rise to, to eternal damnation because they did not accept the free gift of Jesus Christ on this side of life. Others who have accepted Jesus' free gift of life, they will rise into eternal life. Amen. So there is going to be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and of the unjust. 
How are we made just? We are made just by faith. For the Bible says, for you are justified by faith. Amen? Not by works of the law, not by works, lest any man should boast. It is a gift of God. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Paul was telling them, I live my life in such a way that I do not offend man or God. Everything I do is to keep myself on the right path. I do everything that is in line with the righteousness of God. So I should not be an offense to God or to man. Now, after many years, he says, I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. This is why I came to Jerusalem. I was here to bring some help. I came to offer help to the nation and to bring my offerings. Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified. I was going through that seven day of purification, purified in the temple, neither with multitude. I was alone. I wasn't with alone, nor with a tumult. I didn't have a crowd. I was by myself being purified in the temple. Who ought to have been here before thee and object if they, are, if they had ought against me? So these guys who are accusing me should have been here right now, but they, they, they decide not to show up. Right? Because they don't have anything against me. Or else let these same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council, let them speak to my face. If they think they found, let them tell it to you in my face that I actually did something or, or, or against the law according to them. And he's, and so he says, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. So Paul says, the only reason why they are bringing me in before you is because I stood up and said that I believed in the resurrection of the dead. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, when Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the utmost of your matter. He says, I'm going to wait. We're going to put this off. We're going to postpone your hearing, Paul, until when Lys Lysias, the chief captain, comes himself so we can actually talk together about it. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, guys. He said, keep Paul, but give him, make sure he's not, you don't keep him as if he's in bondage. He should feel free. He should have his liberty and that he should be, he should um, for, forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. <laughs> Woo! So they want to keep Paul, you know, but keep him, but give him his liberty. Allow him to do what he wants to do. If he wants to have visitors and his friends and his families to come in and serve him or minister or bring anything to him, do not restrict them. Do not object them. We have liberty, guys, in Christ. Even when it seems like the devil have us trapped, have us in his um, in his in his bondage, even though we might be going through trials, testings, persecution, all of that, don't. Think that your trials mean that you don't have liberty in Christ. Don't think that your problems that you're facing mean that you don't have liberty in Christ. Don't think because the devil is accusing you of this, that, and the devil's nose hole mean that you don't have liberty in Christ. The fact is we got to know that we are free. And the Bible says, whom the son set free is free indeed. So allow him his liberty. Don't stop him from having friends or visitors or loved ones or anything like that. Let the man be free. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he went for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. The faith in Christ, guys. This is what the gospel is. Every time I read it, I have to highlight it. The Bible preaches one message and one message alone, and that is faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. And as he, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Mighty God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, mighty God. I just get a spirit of, of gratefulness, guys. Hallelujah. 
a spirit of gratefulness that I was born into the salvation by faith. That when God comes to me, it was, I got the truth. I got the knowledge of the true revelation that Jesus is our salvation. That we must have faith in Christ to be saved. Because it could have been that I was born in any other different part of the world and was taught wrong wrong doctrine and now i would be like the other person who was listening saying mm -mm, it doesn't go like that no it doesn't go like that thanks be to god that i have been redeemed mighty god yes thanks be to god that the rubbish has been removed from my mind that i have been brainwashed and i am made clean and that i don't walk in nonsense and confusion thanks be to god hallelujah to jesus and as he reasons as he reasoned of righteousness temperance and judgment to come felix trembled and answered Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. So as he was telling Felix about this faith in Christ and telling him whatever he was telling him, Felix begins to tremble. Felix begins to tremble. And all of a sudden, he was as he reasoned of righteousness, this is what is getting the world in a, in a tizzy. This is what is getting the unbelievers all messed up. And all of a sudden, they don't want to hear about God and oh, all this talk about righteousness and holiness and Jesus. Oh, it makes their skin crawl. Amen? Because this is it. Here, here, Paul was reasoning as he reasoned of righteousness. Has he reasoned of temperance? Nobody wants to be temperate this day, these days. They want to just go out there and do everything and anything that they want. Live any and any kind of lifestyle. Be dirty as much as they want. Be filthy as much as they want. Be ungodly and unrighteous as much as they want. They don't want temperance. As he begins to reason with him about judgment, the judgment to come. Nobody wants to hear that message about judgment when Jesus is going to return and when God is going to judge the world, both the quick and the dead, and every man will have to give an account for his sins. They don't want to hear this kind of message. And so in verse 25, we see the same spirit at work where Felix was like, mm -mm, he starts to tremble. He starts to tremble. He does not. It, sh it, it shook him up. It makes him scared. That's what the world is afraid of today. They're afraid of the truth. They are afraid of holy living. They're afraid of righteousness. They're afraid of temperance. And they do not want to know that there is a judgment. That's why they don't want to believe that there is a resurrection from the dead. Because when they die, they want to feel, they feel that they want to believe that they just live any and anyhow. Then they die. And when they're dead, that's it. They're dead. But let me let you know today, you ungodly, whoever ungodly, unrighteous, unholy soul that shall listen to this message. There is a judgment day coming. There is a resurrection that is coming, both for those that are living in Christ and those that are dead in sin. There is a resurrection day coming and that day, mighty God, you will have to give an account for every deed done in your body, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And so you should tremble. You should be afraid. I remember we used to watch something on TV. They would say, be afraid, be very afraid. You should be afraid. You should tremble. But this Felix, when he trembled, it didn't bring him to make him repent. You know what the world is saying? They're saying exactly what Felix said. He said, go away. You Christian people, go away. You Jesus people, go away. You people of righteousness, go away. You people who keep talking about judgment, go away for this time. You know, when I have a convenient season... When it's convenient for me, I will hear you about this. When my body is racked with pain, I will call on you. Maybe you can pray for me to get healing. When it's convenient for me. 
When I need my next job and I need some a blessing, I want to make sure I get the position. I will ask for prayer, but for now, leave, go away. I will hear you again another season. This is the what we are hearing in the world today. They don't want the truth. They, want to, they don't want to hear that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of all. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear that their sins, mighty God, will find them out. They don't want to hear that salvation is of the Lord and judgment also is of the Lord. That they don't want to hear the scripture that said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. They don't want to hear the truth. Mighty God. So go away. Stop telling me about faith in Jesus Christ. Tell me about any other fake religion. But don't tell me Jesus. Tell me about any kind of thing else. Tell me about new age this and new age that. But do not tell me about faith in Jesus Christ. Come again another season. Right now I don't have time for Jesus. But there is going to come a time when he won't have time for you. You're going to stand there saying, Lord, Lord. And he said, depart from me. I don't know you. You understand? God is going to get the law, the last laugh for those who like to mock and to jeer at Christians. It is hard for you to kick against the prick. You don't think that you think you're rejecting my gospel. I don't have a gospel. I am teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. This gospel is not my gospel. As a matter of fact, no human being on this earth have a gospel. It is the gospel that is handed down from Jesus Christ. If you turn over to the book of Revelations, which we have not gotten to yet. Mighty God. But in the book of Revelations chapter 1, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Right? It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This revelation of faith in Christ comes from Jesus himself. It is not my gospel. But you say, go your way. For this time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. When I think I need you, if I want to get saved later, I will call for you. You don't know that the Bible says there is a man who said, I'm going to tear down my barn. I'm going to build a bigger one and I'm going to make sure I store up all my goods and I'm going to do, do this and do that. And I'm going to live and enjoy myself and let my soul delight itself in the fatness of my increase. But God says unto him, thou fool, because this night thy soul shall be required of thee. You think you have another season. Hallelujah. But seasons belongs to God. He decides when, mighty God. And so the Bible would have us to know now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Hallelujah to God. Now because you don't have tomorrow promised to you. Felix said, trembling. Hallelujah. Fearful, trembling, but yet refused to accept the truth. Now he says, come again another season. When I am ready, I will call for thee. And so it goes on to say, he hoped also that money should have been given him for Paul. So this man, not only that, but he says he was hoping that some people would pay him some money. Because if, 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 if the people really want Paul that bad, they could come and bribe this man and pay him some money so he would just hand them over Paul. Amen. Never mind trying to go get to the bottom of the truth. He says if he was hoping that he would get some money for Paul, that means that you see why money is one of the, the Bible says is the root of all evil. 
The love of money is the root of all evil. Sorry, not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. This man, not finding any fault in Paul, yet he said, go away and I will hear you some other season. Because he was hoping that somehow somebody would step up and say, I will give you such and such amount of silver or gold. If you would turn him over to me. That is exactly what Judas did. Judas went and took 30 pieces of silver just to. And so he would um, turn uh, Jesus over to, the, to, 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 to be crucified. Amen. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. People don't want God because they will rather sell God out for money. Amen. And for stuff and for things. Because they don't understand the value of Christ in their lives. He hoped also that money should have been given him for Paul that he might lose him. Wherefore he sent for him the, of, the oftener and communed with him. So he was he would keep sending back for Paul, bring Paul in, you know, so we can talk and ask him some more questions. Instead of just coming to a conclusion and say, here, take him and kill him. Or, you know, I don't fall any, find any fault in him, let him go. He figured if I keep this thing, this case open... And I keep calling them and asking Paul to come in. Eventually somebody will be able to get some money together and come up and say, I will give you in secret, you know, I will pay you such amount if you decide to let him go. But until I see the money, mighty God. And so, but after two years, poor Porcius Festus came into Felix's room. So it's been two years ongoing where he kept, Paul is liberated, doing his thing, having his freedom, but they keep calling him in to, to come talk to Felix. Come on, we need to have another discussion because nobody stepped up yet with any money to bribe and to buy out Paul and to get Paul to go kill him. So after two years, Porcius Festus came into Felix's room and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Amen. Leave him in bondage, not because he had done anything wrong, but he wants to find favor with the Jews. Let me tell you something. Sometimes when you're going through your problems, you don't start blaming yourself. That is one of the things we have to learn as Christians. Don't start, you know, blaming yourself or feeling guilty about something. The enemy is trying to keep you in bondage. Amen. Especially when you're a believer in Jesus Christ. They will try to keep you in bondage because you must be kept because we have to please the world. Why do you think even the church today, the church is up under bondage? The church does, cannot have a voice or an expression like we should. We are not allowed to say this. We are not allowed to say that. You can say God, but don't say Jesus. The, why Jesus' name is such a problem? Because it is the name, the only name given among men whereby we must be saved. Satan has no problem with any other thing because nothing else can redeem your soul but Jesus. Amen. So those who don't believe should look and see that this got to be something about this name Jesus. Because otherwise, why is it bothering Satan and his host so much? Why does the name of Jesus become such an offense to society? Mighty God, if you walk up on the street and you offer up anybody anything else, they will willingly stand up for half an hour and talk to you about it. But go and tell them and say, I want to talk to you about Jesus. I'm not interested. They're gone. They're running as if they, you, they, don't, you know, they don't want to hear. Because the name of Jesus, there is a power to deliver in that name. And Satan does not want people to be free. So the, God, the Bible said the God of this earth, of this world, has blinded their eyes so that they would not believe. Mighty God, I tell you, if I was to come on this platform today and say I am switching and want to become 
um, I, I, if I, if I was to open my, 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 my life and say, I have just turned away from Christianity. I'm now Muslim. I would have, I wouldn't see five people looking at me right here or six or 10 or whatever. I would see thousands of people on here. Amen. That's right, sister. It bothers their demon. The name of Jesus bothers the demon in these people. And I tell you, people are walking around packed up with so much dem demons. Oh, they look pretty. Some of them smell good too if they put on a little bit of perfume, but packed up with demons. Amen. That when you say they see your face, all of a sudden you become an offense to them. You didn't have to do anything bad. You are an offense. Mighty God. But we thank God that we we, 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 you know, we, we might be an offense to the world, but we are not an offense to God because we are now friends with God, not enemies any longer. Amen. We are not, we are no more enemies of the cross. We're not no more enemies of God because by the blood of Jesus, we have been made to come nigh unto him. We have been given rights that we can come boldly before his throne. Amen. You don't allow your enemy to have bold access to your presence like that. Your enemy, you will never find an enemy be able to just walk up to the White House and walk through and get right in. Oh my God, no, it would not happen. You have to have a channel that you come through that proves that you are a friend and not an enemy. You are not coming with any weapons or any things like that to come and cause no, no havoc inside there. You don't just get to walk up in, in front of God like that. And you're an enemy? No. Because we are friends. Because Jesus' blood written our names. Mighty God, our names have been written in the blood of Jesus Christ. Signed, sealed by him. Stamped of approval by the blood of Jesus Christ. That we are now called friends. Because Jesus Christ has taken away the enmity. And made us friends of God. And I'm so grateful for that in the name of Jesus. This is the word for today, guys. We went through chapter 24, chapter 23, and chapter 24. And tomorrow we will be doing 25. Did I say we were doing 24? Yes, we did 23. We Today we did 23 and 24. And tomorrow we will do 25 and 26. And then after that we have 27, 28. And then that will be done. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless the Lord. That's all right. I feel so grateful when I tell you, when you see me here getting all excited, I'm excited because I know what Jesus has done in my life. Amen. This salvation, guys, we could not pay for it. Trust me, there, you know, you know, there are times, there has been times when I could hardly pay my rent every month. Needless to say, pay for my salvation. You understand? I could hardly, some days you wonder, how am I going to make it when to do this or that? Can hardly, you know, pay, pay for a vacation, to go on a vacation. Needless to say, pay for my salvation. Huh? He always makes a way, that's right. So why would I struggle now and, 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 and not glorify the living God? If I want to take a trip from here to, 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 to another country, I have to go through whatever process and get my plane ticket. I've been searching online trying to see if I can find a cheaper ticket. And how much is this one? Okay, let me check over here and see who, how much I will get it for over here. Which date's convenient? Which is the cheapest dates or the cheapest season to go to this place? How, how much is for, you know, if I want to get an all-inclusive, how much is this, the price for this and the price for that? I am on my way to heaven and I don't even have to think about that. I don't have to think about my cost because Jesus paid it all. Glory be to God. <laughs> Lord, I'm so grateful. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's a way maker. Glory be to God. Guys, this is a powerful word today. Every day I read these words and I tell you, it's just so beautiful to just read and line by line as I go, I'm seeing things that Woo! You know, and I'm just so grateful that the Lord, and I tell you, I almost, I was a little bit late getting on here this morning because I was watching the video from yesterday and I was sitting there. I thought I'd just listen for a little while. I got so into it. I forgot it was myself that was speaking. 
<laughs> I forgot that I was literally listening to myself. I was just listening to the word and the word of God is so rich and so powerful that I don't know. I, I decided just to quickly pause it and go look at it and go in the kitchen and I realized the time I said, oh my God, it's time to get online. I didn't even know because, you know, I was just sitting there, hallelujah, glory. I felt so good. I love to hear the word of God. Amen. And it is wonderful. And I'm so grateful. And this, this gospel, guys, is the gospel of the faith in Christ. We are supposed to teach faith in Christ, not faith in ourselves, you know, not, not, not faith in our own abilities, not faith in us being able to do this or do that. It is through Christ that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My walk has to be a walk of faith. Amen. It has to be a walk of faith, guys. So I'm encouraging you all, keep the faith. That is my, my mandate, is to tell you, keep the faith. Don't give up on God. Hallelujah. Don't give up on God because he will never give up on you. Keep the faith. And he that hath begun a good work in you will keep on doing it until the day of Jesus Christ when you shall be perfected in him. Don't let Satan rob you from your destiny. Amen. I know you're hearing depart from me. I don't know you. Do not allow that to be your end. Amen. Follow Christ. Follow him. Like we read over here with Paul where he said he was, he, he lived his life in such a way that he was, he, 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 to not cause offense to neither God nor man. To, be, to, to live in a way that God can look at you like he looked at Jesus Christ and say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. How do we live in that way? We live up under the blood. We keep our faith invested in the blood of Jesus Christ. We keep our dependency on Jesus Christ. Mighty God, stop thinking that you are able to do this on your own. I can live holy. I have been doing this and I've been righteous and I'm all. No, your integrity must be because you are in Christ and you're trusting in him. Mighty God, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Glory be to God. Father, I worship you this morning. I honor you for you are worthy. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the God of the universe. You control all things, O oh God, by the right hand of your power. Mighty God, and you hold us up. Lord Jesus, that though we, when we feel that we are weak and not able to go on, my strength, O oh God, mighty God Almighty, may feel weak, but your, your strength is perfect oh God and so we trust in your perfect strength we trust in your perfect ability to carry us through oh God Lord, let us not lean upon our own understanding. Let us trust in the living God. And let us continue in the faith of Jesus Christ. Lord God, the world don't want to hear about it. And God, when we tell, tell it to them, they fear and they tremble. But they will say, go away. Don't talk to me about God right now. I don't want to hear it right now. Come another season when I'm ready, I will call for you. My God, they will never be ready and they will never call but Jesus you are calling for them mighty God and everyone that hears must my God may they hear and may they make that decision to answer and to say Lord here I am and to say Lord here I am and that you God will locate them oh God in the point of their need oh God and that you will bring them to their knees oh God and that they will repent and receive you as Lord and Savior Mighty God, we pray for healing for this nation. Healing, oh God, for every country. Healing, oh God Almighty, because leaders, oh God, Almighty God, who are standing up, but they are not willing to accept the truth of Jesus. And God, they will rather, my God, want money and they will want, oh God, just money. Lord God, become their God as opposed to you being their God. Just like they were ready to sell out Paul for money, looking for a bribe, mighty God. So they are willing to throw us, the Christians, under the bus, Lord, mighty God, because the, 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 the world.
world and the sinful man may be able to pay money. My God, they get the positions in life and they get the broadcast. My God, they get the notoriety and the government and everybody is on their side pushing their agendas. But the agenda of the kingdom of God, they don't want to hear. They are willing to throw us, the Christians, under the bus. But Lord, we stand flat-footed for you, Lord. We stand steadfast in the faith, O oh God. God, we push forward in the grace of the Almighty God. Father, cause souls to be saved. Cause souls to be born for the kingdom of God. Let them turn from their wicked and their evil ways. Let them seek the righteousness of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for those souls that you have pre-selected and pre-ordained unto eternal life. May they come to you, God. May they not wait until they hear too late, my God. May they turn, oh God, to you. In the name of Jesus, expedite it, Lord. We pray for a revival in our countries. We pray for a revival in the world, oh God. We pray for a revival and a breakthrough, oh God, in the world that righteousness, oh God, will rain down. Oh God, like rivers, oh God, in our streets, oh God, that holiness, oh God Almighty, will be our watchword and our song. Hey, Koshama. Mighty God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, holiness unto the Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. And God, we give you all glory right now. And we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for your blessings, for your healing, for your deliverance, oh God, for restoration over our lives, oh God, for things moving in, 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 in place, oh God, in our lives, for the shift, oh God, that will happen in our lives, oh God, and that your glory will be seen in us, oh God. And God, I am here before you, Lord. Wherever you lead me, I will go. Whatever you ask me to do, God, I will do. God of my I come right now, Lord. I pray, God, take this Gideon spirit that I may have, Lord, that says, I, I, you know, I'm too weak and I'm not able. Take this Moses spirit that say, I cannot speak. Take this spirit, oh God, that will say, I cannot, Lord, and empower me with the spirit of David, oh God, that will run upon that Goliath, Lord, that will run, God, in the faith, that will say, you come to me with sticks and with staves, but I come to you in in the name of the Lord, put upon us a spirit of boldness in this season, oh God, that we will not be moved, that we will not back down, that we will not yield, oh God, to sin or to no man, but we will be yielded to the spirit of God. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We will move in the liberty of your spirit, God, to declare, thus saith the Lord, in the name of Jesus. This I pray right now, Lord, and I pray it over every individual under the sound of my voice, God, a spirit of boldness in this season, oh God. We pray this in Jesus' name. And I say thank you, Lord, for you are worthy. Hallelujah. God bless you guys as you go in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. No weapon, again, that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment, echo shama. You have the power in your mouth to condemn in Jesus' name. You are the righteousness of God. Your identity is in, is in Christ in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are who God says that you are. Stand up, therefore, and stand fast in the liberty, and let no man take your crown. Let no man take your crown. In Jesus' name, let no man take your crown. I pray this in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel boldness rising in my spirit. Glory be to God. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh upon us, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you guys. It is 1223. Wow, this went, this went actually kind of quick. But I'm going to end here because I'm not going to ex, uh, you know, exhaust your energy today. And tomorrow we will come back and we are going to be reading from the book of Acts chapter 25 and 26 tomorrow. By the grace of God in us. Amen. 
And I hope you guys are learning something here. I'm just making sure I, I know whatever we've read. That the Lord is with you and that you guys are learning and that you are mulling over the word of God. Because it's so easy to forget. But I will not forget this word every time. I just have to go back and look and say, Lord, remind me. What did we talk yesterday? I want to make sure that it stays in my, in, in my psyche. Amen. Put it deep on the inside. Mighty God. And none of these things, as we talked about yesterday, none of the trials that we face, none of the opposition that we face, none of the problems that we face in our lives, none of these things shall move us because we don't count our lives dear to ourselves. Thank you for staying on in the name of Jesus because I, I love people. <laughs> I love when people stay to the end and keep commenting negative things because you know what? It is testimony to me that it's interesting enough for you to stay on amen first of all secondly that you get a chance to actually hear what you call rubbish what i just said and on the day of judgment when god says that you heard the word and you rejected it you say god i never heard anything like that he said you remember your comment was rubbish so now depart from me i don't know you god bless you guys in jesus name i'm going to end here <laughs> Hi.